if there's anything the pandemic taught you and I, it was to save money. Well, what better way to save money than buy a car that saves you money? And today we've got a 2009 Toyota Rush. This has been a long awaited video and it's one of those cars that people would love to upgrade to. This is a car that you might want to buy, say, if you're considering a more raised car and you want to still maintain your cost on fuel low. So let's go into the engine and see what is in this car. So under the hood, we've got a 1.5 liter 3SZ VE petrol engine. Now, it's mated to a four-speed automatic gearbox. However, you can also get this car with a five-speed manual. Now, this engine is the same engine you're going to find in the Paso Sete. Um, that's one of the cars that you can find this engine in. It's just that this one is set up in the longitudinal format rather than the transverse format. So it's a rear-wheel drive car rather than a, a front-wheel drive car like the others, okay? So power to the car starts from the rear wheels, but gladly this one is a four-wheel drive version. Some versions are two-wheel drive. This is a four-wheel drive version, so you just need to push a button and it will activate the front wheel. So most of the time it's actually in two-wheel drive. Now that's the beauty of it. Most of the time it's in two-wheel drive. And then when you actually are stuck and need the front wheels to do the job, then the front wheels will actually do the support when you're in a difficult situation. So let's go to the other side. Now, what is it like in the driver's position? So I've driven this car for a bit and I sort of haven't found that position that works for me perfectly. If I lift the seat a little bit, I feel like I'm sitting on, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm walking on sort of high heeled shoes. Then when I put it a little too low, it feels like the steering wheel is too big. Nonetheless, it's pretty, okay the driving position i love the fact that toyota considered adding this armrest just um to cater for somebody who enjoys driving you know while resting their left arm rather than always resting it here yeah the switches are quite a good quality the button for the four-wheel drive is actually right here so you can always turn it off or on the um, and everything is pretty where it should be and that's also very important the ergonomics are very important when you're always um, um you know driving um it's also it also will be appealing for any you know lady or even you know people who like to check themselves out before they leave the car because it got that you know mirror for your driving and my main concern actually is did the manufacturer of this car imagine that the people who would drive it would only use small bottles of water or cups? Or did they assume that maybe they would use only cups? Maybe, I don't know, because a basic cup like this actually doesn't fit properly in the cup holder. And in the door, in the door cup holders, you can probably only fit something like a spray bottle or something like that. So... Let me know in the comments below. Why? Talking about safety, the Toyota Rush has only two airbags. However, it will remind you with exhilarating beeps if the driver or co-driver have not put on their seat belts. So if you consider that a safety feature, that's it. Um, I, if you're looking for a safer car, a safer car would probably be the Nissan Murano, the RAV4, the Mitsubishi Arvia, because those have got the curtain airbags, which I have not seen on this car. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. And if there's some detail that we miss in the comments, just do let us know. If you watched this video up to this point and you haven't yet subscribed, just pause, click subscribe, and pause.
Okay, so this car was first released in 2006 um, under the Toyota badge. <clears throat> but of course, if you look at earlier models, there's a Daihatsu Tirios, and it was also named the Daihatsu Tirios in some other countries, still with this design. Um, but I love the way the, the Toyota sort of finished it off um, on the design of the Rush and also the Daihatsu Bego, which is pretty much the same car. Um, it's got a nice um, plastic cover for the spare wheel, which is a really good quality. And the door is surprisingly heavy. Guys, this door is heavy. And I believe it's heavy uh, just because it has to cater for this full-size spare wheel. Uh, it's not that tiny spare tire that you find in other cars. When you consider the space in the boot, it's quite okay for somebody who has been driving, say, an Alex, which is way smaller. Um, and uh, uh, so if we decided to fold these seats, um, this is what it would look like. Say you have a farm and you want to carry all your produce from the farm, you'd easily just throw in all your stuff, um, whether matokes or things like that. But just remember that this car is underpowered. It's only got about 99 horsepower with this 1.5 liter the, um, engine petrol. So you don't want to overload it with stuff, lest you overwork the engine and cause it to die. Ali. Now let's talk about the, let's talk about the seating and the interior of this car um it's pretty cool actually for someone who is about my height i'm about 180 centimeters with long legs and somehow i'm quite comfortable and of course being a <laughs> of course being a a basic suv i was given a handle here so in case you know it's a sort of uncomfortable road i can easily hold here and I love the grip of the door that was also given to the passengers and the driver. Um, so you can easily hold onto the door and here in case of, you know, that kind of crazy road. Because I guess they imagine whoever would buy this car would probably plan to take it off-road and use it to the maximum. Now, this door closes a little cheaply, but at the end of the day, whoever is buying this car would probably be buying it for purposes of fuel economy nothing else and that takes me to the point of the cost this car costs just a few million shillings about two or three million shillings cheaper than the toyota rav4 the toyota rav4 has more space in the boot the toyota rav4 is almost equally as off-road capable or let's just say the same and the, the toyota rav4 has more space it's wider got better legroom it has a much more noise cancellation outside it's more comfortable it's more powerful it's faster than this car and yet it costs slightly more so when you are spending almost 15 million uganda shillings what would cost cause you to buy this car over say a mitsubishi rvr or a toyota rav4 would it be just the fuel consumption that would make you buy this car or would you buy it because you just love the way it looks? Okay, so this is a car that really you buy because you want to get from point A to point B. Like there's nothing really that you're going to say, oh, I need to buy the Total Rush because you know it's got leather seats, it's got you know all these fancy nice seats. You're going to buy this car because you want to just have a car that will take you from point A to point B. If you need to go to the village roads, it will jump over whatever bumps and whatever. And surprisingly, actually, when you drive this car, it feels like, you know, you're comfortable. Just think of it like a, a mini Prado because, you know, you sort of just bump over potholes and it feels quite okay. It sucks them up quite well. Um, it's not the most comfortable, but actually it's comfortable for the driver, but the people who sit at the back, you find that they are quite shaky, you know, <laughs> all over the place. The only thing you're going to enjoy in this car is actually just the 
fuel consumption. I've been driving for the past maybe 30 minutes or so, and the fuel gauge has not shifted. And that's what anybody who has a fuel economical car usually desires to see when they drive. And, um, well, the speakers are crap. Um, you'll never enjoy any music with it unless, of course, you just want to hear radio. And this, I believe, is pretty much the reason why you will buy this car. Just because you want to get from point A to point B and you want to get there economically. Okay, so the gears take quite a bit of a while. It feels weird when you're driving this car. It's got the four speed um, automatic. You can also get it with a manual gearbox. Um, but the gear, it takes long to switch from like gear one to gear two. Um, feels weird, but uh, so even in traffic or something, you find that it's sort of raving a bit more on the first or second gear, and yet you know you're already going over 40 or so, and you know it takes long to say go to gear three or four, and so it gives that weird sound of you know one of those you know, cheap um, cars. So the advantage of this 3SZVE is also that it's got the VVTi technology, so of course it will uh, you know, adjust the power of the engine depending on how you're driving and of course give you a very good fuel economy. This car is, according to paper, supposed to give you about 13.8 kilometers per liter. Uh, let me see what it is giving us at the moment. Uh, Let's see, 8.9 kilometers per liter, but that's because we've been doing a lot of uh, tests on the car. But I presume if we reset this trip computer, it should probably be giving you about averagely 11. And a lot of that is also uh, affect, uh, caused by the fact that bits and pieces of this car are actually heavy. Like I showed you the boot door, the boot door is heavy. <laughs> and uh, some bits and pieces of the car are also heavy and I guess also because of the fact that it's a rear wheel drive they had to, Toyota had to include a bit of uh, you know um, strength to certain areas of the body of the car just to make sure it's um, versatile of the off-road yeah. this is my theory if Toyota could just have given this car a 2 liter engine or a 1.8 if it had given, if Toyota had given this car actually the 2ZR engine rather than the 3SZ, give it the, uh, the 2ZR 1.8 liter engine, this car would have been actually more fuel efficient than this 1.5 liter because you know how it is. If you give somebody, a small man, a bag of cement to move around, it might actually be, um, he might get more weary than giving it to a man who is actually more a buff to move about a bag of cement. You might find that you save money because that the buffer man will actually you know do it faster than someone who is really small. Okay? So yeah, it's a little bit underpowered when it comes to driving this car. Uh, and so if you're trying to take this car on a long journey, um, I suggest that you try to avoid being a pedal happy person because you will really rev the car to you know, make all the noise, but it will not be going. Even if you are as wealthy as whatever, you will always desire to have your fuel gauge go down a little slower than it should. Unless, of course, you're not the one paying for your own fuel. Now, that story is a different one. So if you're really um, considering buying the Toyota Rush, um, one of the things you need to check for on a serious note is rust especially if you're buying the four-wheel drive version because it could have been driven in areas where there's winter in Japan. And so you want to make sure that rust is not on your list when you're buying this car. So what goes wrong with these cars? Well, the most important thing that you need to consider is to try and buy one after a pre-purchase inspection or try to ship in your own where you have the details of the car in advance. Avoid high mileage versions of this car. Why? Because the higher mileage versions usually will have issues of 
oil consumption. And usually when there's high oil consumption, you find the issues of a lot of fuel consumption. Now, this car is actually a rebadged, or it came under the also a badge of the Daihatsu Bego. Now, to be honest, pretty much most or all the parts in this car are Daihatsu. And this badge is really what gave it a higher price. So, what have we concluded at this point in time? The Toyota Rush is a very fuel economical SUV with pretty much everything that you might want in terms of fuel economy. But if you're buying it, you might want to look at the Mitsubishi RVR, you might want to look at the Toyota RAV4. If you're looking for some more luxury or things like that, feel good driving experience. Otherwise, this car will go to any kind of road that you want it to go to. It will hit all kinds of potholes, all kinds of bumps, all kinds of places that you'd ever want to go to, but is low on power, it is not as comfortable, and it's quite narrow on the inside. And the frustrating bit is the price point. Because if it was just left as a Daihatsu, we would have understood and kept the price down. Because what takes the price up for this car is actually the brand name, the logo that is put on that front right there, the Toyota brand name. So thanks again for watching and catch you in the next one.